People are ditching their countries to seek a better life abroad. The cost of living in the UK and the US is getting ridiculous. And with the rise of remote work, it's now possible to live that island life dream at a much younger age. So let's start explaining how much life costs on the beautiful surf capital island of the Philippines, Chargao. We are a British family that moved to the Philippines in 2020. Four years later, we're in a unique position to give you the cost of living in this paradise. Went through the pandemic, a storm that rips our home apart. We adopted a local dog, bought land on a remote island. The biggest dream I've ever seen. It's the biggest dream I've ever seen. And travelled all over the place. So what is the actual cost of living the island life? So let's talk money and show you where we live today. This is our house. We rent it long term from an amazing family that took care of us during the lockdown years. We pay 25,000 pesos per month to live here, which is 460 US dollars or 350 British pounds per month. It came furnished, but our landlady allowed us to add our own furniture to make it feel a lot more like home. And it's not easy to find a house like this in Chargao. The first house we lived in was triple the price and it was smaller. So you might struggle during your research phase of finding a home for an affordable price here in the Philippines, especially on Chargao Island. Most people from abroad will begin their search on a site like Airbnb, where the price range is wild. You can expect monthly prices from as low as $200 all the way up to $3,800 or more. That's £150 to £3,000 in British money. In my opinion, here in the Philippines, you get what you pay for the low budget homes will almost certainly be very uncomfortable with no insect or rodent ceiling, water leaks, poor unsafe electrical work and very little furniture. And the high budget homes are better of course, but many of them are overpriced without the build quality to match. Instead of using Airbnb, you're more likely to find a home like our one on local Facebook communities and marketplaces. Search for Chargao long-term rentals on Facebook to start connecting with the landlords on there. Electricity in the Philippines is apparently one of the most expensive in Southeast Asia. As you can see, our house has an epic solar panel setup, which cost us a whopping 700,000 pesos, which is about 12,000 US dollars or 10,000 British pounds. Despite having this seven kilowatt hybrid system, we still use a little bit of grid power at night, which means our average monthly bill comes in at just under 3,000 pesos, which is about 50 US dollars or 40 British pounds. The house next door to us has been racking up bills close to 14,000 pesos recently, which is $250 per month or 200 pounds per month. So we're grateful for investing in the solar tech, especially because it means we can live totally off the grid when the grid power cuts out, which happens very often here on the island. Everyone that visits Chargao seems to have the same dream of owning a plot of land to build their off-grid home. Last year, we bought land in the south of the island to try and begin our version of that dream. We paid 4,000 pesos per square meter for our plot. That's the equivalent of 70 US dollars per square meter or $7 per square foot. If you want an acre of land at that price, it would cost you 16 million pesos or around 290,000 US dollars. In British pounds, that's about 230,000 pounds. Since we signed the contract, the cost of land in that same area has increased to over 7,000 pesos per square meter. So it's safe to say that buying land on Chargao Island isn't cheap, even by Western standards anymore. In other parts of the island, you can find much cheaper land though. But just like with the rents, you get what you pay for. Cheap prices often lead to territory disputes, 
no road or utility access and general headaches down the line. Building costs are impossible to predict and they vary so much that I'm not even going to bother <laughs> trying to give you a figure on that one. Transport prices can be shocking here. For example, sometimes internal domestic flights from Shargao Islands to Manila can be 15,000 pesos, which is 279 US dollars or 210 pounds. There are times when that same money would pay for an international flight from Manila to Japan, Korea, Singapore or Thailand. So you'd probably guess that boat travel is cheaper, right? <laughs> well, the price to bring your car from one island to another is usually around 5,000 pesos, which is 90 US dollars or 70 British pounds for every two to four hour crossing. So that adds up very quickly. If you want to buy a car here, here's what you can expect. An old 90s car like this one will set you back around 80,000 pesos, which is about 1,500 US dollars or 1,200 pounds. Not cheap considering what you might buy in the US or the UK for the same money. Something newer, like this 2011 Honda CRV, will cost around 400,000 pesos, which is 7,000 US dollars or 5,500 pounds. In my opinion, this is the kind of price to be your bare minimum here. If you want a reliable machine that actually works every day without fail. New cars will be 1 million pesos plus and more. So well over $17,000 and £14,000. Insurance, tax and registration is very reasonable compared to the UK at least. Our annual bill for this is around 5,000 pesos, which is about 90 US dollars or 70 pounds per year. An automatic scooter like this will cost about this much. A custom cafe racer will cost about this much. A tuk-tuk will cost about this much. And fuel is currently sitting around 70 pesos per litre, which is around $1.25 or one pound per litre. In US gallons, that's about $4.75 per gallon. Travelling by road here can be cheaper if you can handle the stress of driving across multiple poorly paved Philippines islands. Our road trip from Chargao, Mindanao to Manila and Luzon and return only cost us 27,000 pesos, which is about 480 US dollars or 380 pounds. This covered all of our cargo boat fees and fuel costs, but it took forever and it wasn't for the faint hearted. Visas. The cost to legally live here as a foreigner can be quite shocking and vary based on your age. People under 50 will most likely be on a tourist visa to begin and the most recent prices for these are around 46,500 pesos annually per person which is around $850 or £650. The good thing about the Philippines tourist visa is you can renew it back to back for up to three years before you have to exit the country and you can come back again immediately if you choose to and begin those three years again. The ultimate visa for under 50s is the quota visa but it's super expensive. You could build a starter house for the same money. Here's the price breakdown of the quota visa. So for our family of three it's split into the principal holder, the spouse and the child. This would be about 2,046,000 pesos, which is over 36,000 US dollars or 29,000 pounds. And all of us would get the quota visa status in our passports. The reason why the quota visa is good is because it's for life and you become kind of like a proper resident here. You get an almost elite status and you don't have to keep reporting at immigration all the time. There is a new visa in development for under 50s called the Digital Nomad Visa, but the price for that is currently unknown. <laughs> but we'll let you know more about that when it's available, if it becomes available. If you are over 50, then things get a lot easier because of the retirement visa. If you could put $10,000 or £8,000 into a Philippines bank account or invest in a property or have a long-term lease with $800 or £630 per month in pension, then you can stay indefinitely. If you can put $20,000 into a Philippines bank account or property investment, then you don't need the monthly pension to get the visa. Or you could just marry a Filipino. <laughs> But we don't, know, we don't know how much that's going to cost you. And if you're wondering why we're standing here to make this segment of the video, it's because this is where the new visa office is going to be on our island. And what a beautiful location, right on the boulevard here, right on the seafront. We will be talking to the immigration officers fairly regularly to see if any new visas become available, but these are the best ones for the moment. Close to the boulevard, we've just come to one of our favourite places for dinner, an early dinner. Now this place is called Typhoon. It's one of the only like fully Thai restaurants here on the island. 
Food is probably the first thing on your mind in a new country. I know it is on mine. <laughs> and you'll be happy to know that eating out is definitely cheaper than the West in most cases. We spend around 15,000 pesos a month going to restaurants like this or to much fancier places too, including high-end cafes, beachside resorts and bars where you can even swim while you're waiting for your meal. And that works out to around $270 or £210 a month to eat out around two or three times a week for our whole little family. If we did this in the UK though, it would probably cost at least triple that amount. When we do want to save money, we just buy our groceries and we cook at home. We spend around the same amount for this, around $270 or £210. That's for all our vegetables and proteins, our condiments and drinks as well. And this includes anything that's imported that we buy online that has to come in from a different island or from the mainland. Sasha had her teeth whitened on the island and that cost 15,000 pesos, which is over 200 US dollars or around 200 British pounds. For a regular clean, it's about 600 pesos, which comes to about $10 or £8.50 and double that for an extreme clean. Things like fluoride pastes cost about a thousand, which is about $15. Big smile. I think mum is looking more worried than story. <laughs> One of the other expenses that I think most people will find when they come here is accommodation. I'm talking about going to hotels here. The footage that you're seeing right now is from a place on the island called Chargao Island Villas. It's, I would say, an upmarket area, a very nice experience, good holiday vibes. And that place would cost you around $250 or £200 per night to stay in a place like this. This is like price range of well over 10,000 pesos to 15,000 pesos for anywhere of this kind of caliber. I'm talking about beachside in a popular area, somewhere where you can have a restaurant on site and maybe even a spa with like professional spa treatments as well. So accommodation can be quite expensive and it varies a lot as well, like the rent, sometimes you pay a lot and you don't get what you pay for, or sometimes you pay very little, like places that are around 3,000 pesos a night and you get an amazing stay. Obviously you wouldn't have the same amenities as some of these places, but you could have a comfortable accommodation for around $50 or less. But it's definitely not as cheap for accommodation as it was during our time in Thailand. I would liken accommodation prices to European here. So private schools for kindergarten grades and up cost around 600 pesos per day and that works out to about $10 or £8.50 and the price does go down if you pay monthly or like a longer term in a block. And activity groups for kids are around 300 pesos per hour which works out to around $5 or £4. Most activities here like surf lessons with an instructor, wakeboarding sessions at the local wake park with some tutoring or gym classes in a group session like CrossFit, there are some dance classes, they will cost from about 500 pesos and up, around $9 or £7 per session. So, <laughs> if you want to live on a remote island in the Philippines, you can expect to pay around 100,000 pesos per month for a decent life with your family. And that works out to around $1,800 or £1,500 per month. Of course, you could slash this price significantly if you're living alone or in a house share situation and only eating at home or buying street food. We know some people surviving on as little as 10,000 pesos per month here. So it can be done. One other subject that we should touch on is pet costs. We have a dog, <laughs> which, you know, most people maybe wouldn't have a dog if they moved to the Philippines to begin with anyway. Poppy has actually been to the vet a few times and there are certain things you have to factor in. For example, if you want to go away, you have to factor in pet costs to look after them while you're away, whether that's boarding them at the vet or in a pet hotel, which we've done once with Poppy their annual vaccinations, their treatments and things that they need. So all of those costs do add up, but if you compare vet costs out here to Western pet costs, they are significantly lower. I would say about a third. For example, when she had her annual vaccinations and nails clipped, it cost 1,100 pesos, and your mum had her dog done in England for about 
60 pounds or something compared to 15 pounds yeah so it's like exactly. four times more expensive yes even seeing a regular vet in the uk would cost you about 40 pounds just to see the vet whereas here they don't even charge you for that they just charge you for the medicine and the yeah. treatment that they do yeah so it definitely works out cheaper to have a pet here than it does in the uk from our personal experiences yeah all of the costs and examples that we're giving in this video are obviously for our experiences and our family which is two adults a seven-year-old daughter and a dog yeah. <laughs> so if these prices are relevant to you take what you need from it we will say also that prices have increased here a lot in the last four years we can give you an example of that being we buy liters of soy milk and each one used to be about 100 pesos and now they're about 130 pesos so it's gone up by 30 percent in four years yeah things um, like chickpeas cans of chickpeas have almost doubled in price as well they used to be 60 65 pesos and the most recent ones that we bought last week were 110. Yeah. hopefully that will level out for a bit but cost of living has gone up everywhere at the same time so if we try and compare those prices to what's happening in the US and the UK right now, you guys out there are also experiencing massive price hikes. So it is still cheaper to live in the Philippines, but it might not be as cheap as it was five years ago. So hopefully this information will be useful and you can make your own calculations based on your own personal circumstances. And we are basing a lot of our pricing on where we live, which is a very tourist heavy, popular island in the Philippines. Yes. It's not the same everywhere. Other islands can be a lot cheaper, but then the lifestyle can also be a little bit lower and perhaps not up to the standards you're used to if you're from the West. The cost of living on the island opposite Shargao is a lot less. The cost of land is like a fraction. The cost of rent can be way lower, but if you're in a popular area, the prices go up and it's the same if you try and move to the city, you're gonna be experiencing city prices and those kind of hikes. So we are at the end of the video and we're going to do a shout out. Today's shout out is going to... Andrea. Huge thank you to Andrea for becoming a member of our channel. It makes a big difference to us. If you want to become a member yourself, hit the join button which appears below the videos or it's in the description. And we will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.